Hey everyone, welcome back to Unity Roundtable, a show where I cover Unity-related news, updates, tips and tricks, tutorials, games, and more. 2022 came and went, and thanks to Unity's efforts toward making the engine as accessible as possible, we've seen a huge surge of Unity-powered games released in 2022. In a recent report by Unity, design director Jay Armstrong from Massive Monster said that it does feel like there's been a huge wave of games being made. It could be that the barrier to entry is lower and that there are many more resources that are readily available. And as much as I'd like to go over all of them, I only have so much time and we're already four months into 2023. I'll also have a video covering some of my most anticipated Unity games coming this year. So keep an eye out for that or go watch it via the link in the description if you're watching this from the future. So here are a few of my favorites. Rollerdrome is a third-person action shooter that seamlessly blends high-octane visceral combat with fluid movement and tricking mechanics for an original adrenaline-pumping shooter experience like no other. This game takes the classic Tony Hawk-style gameplay and turns it into an arena shooter. As someone who spent most of his teenage years playing Tony Hawk games, this one made me feel right at home. It took the best parts of both genres, such as the fast-paced shooting, the trick combos, and unorthodox ways of regaining ammo, trimmed away the unnecessary fat like base having to balance while grinding or managing different ammo pools, and manage to create something unique and refined with gameplay that feels very intuitive. A case study posted on the Unity website mentions that Rollerdrome's brutalist outlined art style required a considerable amount of edge detection and line rendering. Roll7's tech artists took advantage of Unity's extensibility and built their own renderer. No comply shaders make the more outlandish and cartoony elements work, and if you go for the cartoony, you need the physics to match, says tech artist. Alina Salmer. Using just a few polys and a small gradient texture can produce complex, colorful scenes, and for Roll7, it was an essential technique for achieving 4K 120fps performance on next-generation platforms. Mark Brown from Game Maker's Toolkit made a video covering the game, and I recommend you watch that if you'd like a deeper dive. Next up is Tunic. Largely developed by one person and published by Finji, Tunic is an adorable action-adventure game played from an isometric perspective that features mechanics inspired by Zelda and Dark Souls. However, there is a whole lot more hiding underneath its simplistic surface. Tunic does something different, something I've rarely, if ever, seen other games do, and that is to completely let go of the player's hand and let them figure things out on their own. Down to there being no clear tutorial and everything in the game, including the interface, being written in a mysterious language that you have to learn and decipher as the game progresses. The game features an in-game manual you can flip through that is made up of pages you collect. It's similar to the ones that would come with games back in the day. It has all the instructions and provides context for a lot of the aspects of the game, as well as several hidden clues and secrets, but you need to decipher it all yourself as well. Andrew Scholdes, who did the majority of the work on Tunic, used ProBuilder, a really fantastic tool that was previously third-party but is now part of Unity, to rapidly block out the game world. If you haven't used this tool before, I highly recommend you try it out. The Noclip crew made a developer breakdown video that goes over Tunic's design evolution. It's very insightful, so give it a watch if that interests you. Cult of the Lamb is another hit release from 2022. In Cult of the Lamb, you play the role of a possessed lamb that must build a loyal following in an ominous stranger's name. Start your own cult in a land of false prophets, venturing out into diverse and mysterious regions to build a loyal community of woodland followers and spread your word to become the one true cult. Cult of the Lamb's core gameplay loop combines base building and micromanagement mechanics that I personally find very fun and addicting. With roguelike progression and combat-heavy dungeon exploration, from games like The Binding of Isaac, all in an adorable and charming 2.5D aesthetic. The game's interactive live streaming integration gave it a unique twist. One of my favorite streamers, Slippy, played this on release, and being able to interact with the game through the live stream's chat made it a super fun experience. Cult of the Lamb was Massive Monster's first Unity project. In an article on the Unity blog, Jay Armstrong mentions that one of the reasons why they switched to Unity from their custom-built engines was its versatility, which allowed them to build their own in-engine tools. Another reason was the huge library of time-saving tools and resources available on the Unity Asset Store. Sifter did a video into interview with Julian and Will from Massive Monster, sharing the development story and some development insights, so check that out. 
And of course, we can't have a list of Unity games released in 2022 without mentioning Neon White. Neon White is a lightning fast first person action game that uniquely combines card collecting with shooting mechanics while heavily focusing on speedrunning gameplay. I don't normally lean towards speedrunning type games, and the last one I played was Seum Speedrunners from Hell, but the fast based action and movement in Neon White felt really great, and the whiplash shift to purposely cringy, overacted visual novel style dialogue was a lot of fun to sit through. The dual purpose of the cards is very unique and intuitive. Every card you pick up can be used as a weapon or be discarded to trigger an ability. This makes you really think about every move strategically and, with how fast the pacing is, you need to be doing this constantly and on the turn of a dime. In an interview with Go Nintendo, Ben Esposito, the game's lead designer, states, hitting a constant 60 FPS on Nintendo Switch was a bigger undertaking than you might think. It would not have been possible without working with Unity directly. They came up with heaps of tricks to squeeze in dynamic shadows, ambient occlusion, anti-aliasing, and even planar reflections. For this one, I recommend yet another GMTK video that talks about how Neon White makes you speedrun speedrunning. I know, but watch the video and it'll all make sense, I promise. Another game I loved was Dorf Romantic. Developed by a tiny team of four, Dorf Romantic is a cozy puzzle game where you create a beautiful and ever-growing village landscape by strategically placing and rotating tiles. Dorf Romantic got an early access release back in 2021, but its full release was in mid-2022. The gameplay loop is simple but effective. The goal is to grow your village as much as possible before you run out of tiles. You earn tiles by completing small randomized quests such as building a forest with more than 40 trees or a railway with exact 30 pieces. Once you're in that bubble, it's a very zen experience, and playing around is a great way to relax. Dolph Romantic offers a surprisingly high replay value by the simple addition of a scoreboard and unlockable tiles and biomes. Now before we move forward, here are some honorable mentions. Akka, an adorable non-linear game by Cosmo Gado about finding inner peace in a small open world made up of carefully handcrafted islands that are packed with things to do. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a remake of the incredibly unique Stanley Parable by Crows Crows Crows, packed with adjustments and new content. Proteus, a fast-paced action-packed Doom-inspired first-person shooter with a stylish retro aesthetic. Patch Quest, an adorable roguelite adventure game about collecting and riding monsters. Citizen Sleeper, a tabletop inspired narrative RPG set in a ruined space station. Explore the station, choose your friends, escape your past, and change your future. Bear and Breakfast, a laid back management adventure game where you play as a well meaning bear trying to run a BB in the woods. Control Alt Ego, an immersive sim where you transmit yourself between bots and devices and exploit the innovative mechanics to solve problems your way. You Suck at Parking, a racing game where your goal is to stop, race against the clock as you drift, cruise, and occasionally go airborne over a hundred frustratingly fun wild levels. Stacklands, an adorable village builder where you stack cards to collect food, build structures, and fight creatures. I was a teenage exocolonist, a narrative RPG with card-based battles where the choices you make and skills you master affects the course of your character's life and the survival of your colony. Ixion, an unrelenting city-building odyssey across the stars. Balance preservation and exploration as you manage infrastructure, resources, and crew. Alright, let's continue with Oli Oli World. Brought to you by Roll7, the same studio that helped bring Rollerdrome to life, Oli Oli World is a very stylistic and bold skateboarding platformer that's bursting with personality. It's the third entry in the Oli Oli series and the first to switch to 3D visuals along with a radical shift in visual aesthetic and tone. While I personally quite enjoy franchises like Tony Hawk and Skate, this one isn't quite what comes to mind when you think skateboarding game. It's maybe a bit closer to the Runner series, but with skateboarding movesets and tricks. The fast-paced platforming gameplay is just challenging enough to keep you on your toes without becoming frustrating. In addition to that, the game is full to the brim with personality, from the odd and extravagant characters to the wacky, colorful, and diverse world you play in, and the insane level of character customization allows you to create truly unique avatars. In Unity's 2023 gaming report, Tom Haggerty, the director at Roll7, said, Unity has helped us find the fun in gameplay and get to the point of the game more quickly. In some cases, we've been able to figure it out within a few days or even a few hours. 
Next is Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap is a fast-paced collectible card battle game developed by Second Dinner. The game features a collection of different characters from the Marvel Universe with easy to learn but difficult to master strategy mechanics. This game is my guilty pleasure. Throughout the last quarter of 2022, I was addicted to Marvel Snap and I'm still playing it today. It's super simple premise of bite-sized 6-7 to seven turn matches with lots of twists and turns makes it a very engaging game that can lead to really surprising outcomes. Every time, no matter how many decks you've built or matches you've played. The various forms of progression the game offers in combination with the evolving look of the cards as you level them up and unlockable card variants makes it very engaging as well. Back in 2014, Blizzard proved that Unity can be a powerful engine for creating card battlers, and Marvel Snap contributes to the long line of great Unity-powered card games. Kent Eric Hagman, the associate design director at Second Dinner, said in a recent Unity blog post that developing in Unity, it was super easy to jump in and try out wild new ideas. In the same Unity Gaming report I previously mentioned, co-founder and CDO Ben Broad said, In the past, getting games to people's devices wasn't easy. Unity Cloud Build made it very easy for the whole team, especially as we went fully remote during the pandemic. We used it extensively for all of our builds throughout the development of Marvel Snap. If you're developing in Unity and haven't checked out their gaming services yet, I highly recommend that you do. If you're interested in a full Unity Roundtable video on Unity's gaming services, let me know by responding to the poll in my community tab. At GDC 2023, Young Wu and Nikki Broderick from Second Dinner showcased some of the tools and processes that helped their team build Marvel Snap in Unity. If you didn't attend but are interested in watching the talk, it should be available in the GDC vault by mid April, so keep an eye out for that. Another release from 2022 was Trombone Champ. Developed by Holy Wow Studios, Trombone Champ is the world's first trombone-based rhythm music game. With a wacky visual aesthetic and the freedom to play notes at any time, this game can be a really wild experience. I played this with a friend not too long ago and I found it to be genuinely hysterical. There's not much more I can say about this other than it's a simple game that's a lot of fun. Also, baboons. Baboons everywhere. In a game developer article, Holy Wow founder Dan Vakita states that the character models themselves aren't original creations, they're from the Unity Asset Store, however we dramatically reskinned them to give them funnier Muppet-like faces and clothing. This is a testament to how much of a useful resource the Unity Asset Store can be when you're looking to develop on a budget, as a small team, or avoid reinventing the wheel. And speaking of which, if you're looking to create a rhythm game in Unity, I would highly recommend the Choreography Asset to get you started fast. Link to that in the description. The Trombone Channel did a great retrospective on how Trombone Champ and Holy Wow, the development studio that made it, came to be. And finally, The Wandering Village. Developed by Strayfan Studio, The Wandering Village is a city building and farming simulation game that takes place on the back of a giant wandering creature. Building your village and managing your resources while also having to make sure Anbu, the giant creature you live on, is happy is such a great mix of mechanics. It's kind of like taking care of a Tamagotchi creature of sorts, and keeping the creature and world fully 3D while having all the village related visuals in an adorable 2D style is a really cool way of adding some distinction and content contrast between the two aspects of the game. The team at Strayfan Studios used multiple camera tricks to swap between all the available perspectives. One of them is having a camera locked to Anbu's top surface when in the village view so the view is steady when Anbu does abrupt movements like sneezing or shaking. Like I said, I have another video that covers my most anticipated Unity powered games coming in 2023, so watch that next if it's already out. And if you can, subscribe to Andrew David Plus on Patreon to support the channel and access exclusive content. Thank you for watching and I'll See you all on Discord.